Today I'm talking about what happens if you get a 0% evaluation. If you file a VA claim and your rating decision comes back as 0% evaluation, then everything is in a total loss because if you have multiple 0% evaluation disabilities, you can actually be awarded a disability rating of 10% according to 38 CFR 3.324. Come back, Craig, say, what? Yeah, we're just getting started on this so-called loser of a rating, and we've already found a winner. Let's see what else 38 CFR 3.324 says. Uh, whenever a veteran is suffering from two or more separate permanent service-connected disabilities of such character as clearly to interface with normal employability, even though none of the disabilities may be of compensable degree under the 1945 schedule for rating disabilities, the rating agency is authorized to apply a 10% rating, but not in combination with any other rating. Perfect, I just dropped some verbatim uh, uh, regulation on you there. So. Um, in layman's terms, this means um, that two ratings of 0% that are service-connected um, that also inter interfere with your ability to work, then you'll receive a shiny new rating of 10%. <laughs> Regulations like this are the reason I decided to make this YouTube channel because this shit is both frustrating and fascinating. I've decided to embrace the fascinating part of the regulations in 38 CFR, which is the schedule for rating disabilities. So let's see what else we can find. Uh, before we do that, I wanted to tell you that I make these videos to educate veterans and I appreciate your support. Please drop a like and a comment on this video and make sure that you uh, uh, subscribe and turn the little notification bell on so you don't miss any of my thrilling upcoming videos. All right, so um, that was the first one. If you get two zeros, you could actually get 10. Um, another one is if you have your um, disability rating at 0%, AKA 0% evaluation, you actually have one of the three components needed in order to win a VA claim, right? And you have the service connected piece. If you d decide to appeal your decision or if you file for an increase in the future, you'll need to work on your current diagnosis part and the nexus letter that describes how your current disability is linked to your service-connected disability, but you already have the service-connected piece. So that's nice. That's two things. And speaking of filing for an increase in the future, you will now have a disability with a 0% valuation. Um, and then if you can prove your symptoms got worse, then you actually have something that can be increased. So good on that. All right, we're in... Uh the Bible, if you will. We're looking at the shoulder, girdle, and arm. Um, you should know your disabilities, and you should look them up in the regs, and it'll tell you um, what the Absolutely reading is. Absolutely nothing. You know, it's different for the dominant um, hand or, and then the um, non-dominant. And um, you're obviously probably not going to be too thrilled about uh, reporting that your symptoms got better. Um, but if it gets worse, um, then you can go up and and be aware of, you know, what it's going to take for your symptoms to get worse in case you need to file for an increase. And then knowing what you have, um, you should also be familiar with the things that um, are secondary to what you have. So you can file secondary claims. But anyway, here's an example of um, a 0% evaluation. Um, this is for slight flexion of wrist and fingers. So if this uh, moved from uh, slight to moderate or moderately severe or severe, um, you could see the ratings go up on both sides, dominant and non-dominant. Um, so another you know, kind of real life example or whatever of a 0% evaluation, um, not necessarily meaning the end of the world and all is lost. The last thing that's good about a 0% evaluation is that you're able to attach other disabilities to it as a secondary condition. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples 
of secondary conditions that are attached to 0% ratings. All right, so this one isn't a um, 0% evaluation. It's actually not service-connected. Um, but I found it while I was doing my research. Just thought it was funny. You know, gunshot wound, not service-connected. Guess that, no, it happened in service. Um, so here's a 0% evaluation of scars and a 0% evaluation of condition of the skeletal system. Uh, looks like the veteran got 10% for the invertebral disc syndrome. So this happened 21 years ago. And um, not sure if the scars can get worse, but I'm sure there's um, ways to increase it. And I'm sure there's things that can happen to those scars that you can attach secondary conditions to. And um, as this is a pretty broad term, same thing applies, right? You can increase this and you can definitely file secondary conditions to it. So this is an example of a secondary condition, um, something getting connected to it. So this is a problem with legs, both feet, it's 0%. And then this little arrow is the thing that means a secondary condition. So this veteran has scars, right and left lower extremities, previously rated as residual scars. So 10% service connected secondary to a 0% service connected. And um, this is probably the um, most important thing that I want you to um, understand about a 0% evaluation. Let me jump in here real quick and tell you about my boot camp. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my boot camp. You can talk to me live. There's a link on the website. And in the description, combatcraig.com. And also, if you need medical evidence, like a nexus or documenting your symptoms properly, go to our website, combatcraig.com, and it says med team slash nexus letters. Click on that link, fill out the form, boom, you're done.